Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining Big Picture Organization and Task Management on my Mac, iPhone, and iPad. My name is Matt Caton. Thank you very much for joining me today for this very special webinar that we have just specifically for Mac users. Uh, we recognize that many of our webinars, broadcasts, and even video tutorials are typically presented from a Windows environment. And from time to time, we like to remind everyone that the Brain application is not only Mac friendly, but specifically designed to work on a Mac. It's not just a Windows application that was converted over to Mac. The Brain 10, our current release version, is designed and, uh, and fully functional for the Mac environment from the ground up. So today, I'll be sharing with you many specific key features for, that are Mac friendly and, and uh, unique to the Mac environment, and demoing that the Brain application itself is cross-platform compatible. Those of you that may have joined a Brain webinar in the past may recognize some of the Brains that I'll be sharing today. I'm actually gonna open up my own personal um, recreational Brain that I actually use on my Brain 101 classes just to demonstrate that from time to time, I'm using that brain in a Windows environment, I sync it to the cloud, and then access it from my iOS device, from my iPhone, or from my Mac here at home. So I'm actually broadcasting today from my home office. I've got my Mac Mini uh, that I love and use every uh, weekend and, and when I'm working remotely. And so I'll be sharing how I use the brain on, uh, on a Mac machine and how similar it is in most scenarios to a Windows machine. So it's very, very easy to switch back and forth uh, between the two. So as I mentioned earlier, if you do have a question today, please feel free to write it into the GoToMeeting question panel. I'll be absolutely certain at the end of today's demo to circle back and answer any additional questions uh, that you may have. But for now, let's go ahead and get started. As you can see, I have a brain open right now. And this is a sample brain that I like to use um, <clears throat> just because it reflects, it's a great example of using the brain in a business environment. So the first thing I wanna talk today are, uh, about is just a few basic features of the brain application. If you're new to the brain, you're just finding out, hey, the brain runs on Mac, I use Mac, let's see what the brain is all about. I'm gonna go over just a, a few basic features of the application and then start adding in some, some digital content and uh, mapping out a few different projects that I have and using very Mac specific applications um, here from the brain running on my Mac. So this particular brain is called eSolutions Consulting and you'll notice that the brain is divided into two main areas. We've got over on the left, what we refer to as being the Plex and over on the right are, is the, the content area. And these are all of our file attachments, whether it's a note, uh, a link to a document, a local document, or a link to something that you're storing in Dropbox, or even a web link or uh, email attachment, et cetera. All of the attachment or data or content that's associated with a thought is going to be accessible from, uh, from this right-hand tab over here which is the content area. Now we can move this content area around so you can reconfigure the brain to best fit your needs. Um, if you wanna move the content area to the left and the plex to the right, there's some buttons here that I can simply click on to flip flop the two. So maybe I like having the brain in the right hand side of the screen a little bit smaller and I'm really focused more on you know, the notes or the, the files that are attached with, with individual thoughts, or we can do an over under setting or, or under over, et cetera, um, and flip flop those as well. So many different options that you have as far as layout and even the size of the brain as well. If you notice if I over here in the Plex, I can scale this up and down uh, to uh, make things a little smaller, larger on the screen. So very, very highly customizable to get the layout of the application to work best for you. And pieces of information in the brain are what we call thoughts. And a thought can represent anything from just a placeholder that other related thoughts are connected to, uh, to actual files and documents. 
And of course, anytime I click on a thought, moves that thought to the very center of the screen and displays all related information around it. So here, as you can see, I've clicked on, um, I've clicked on clients. Clients is now the current center of the brain. I've got a, just a random note over on the right about my clients. Um, and you can see as I click down from thought to thought, it just moves that thought into the center of the plex until I get to the thought that I'm looking for. And once again, displays all related information around it. And it's important to point out, and I'll take the time now to talk about how the brain is so much different than a file structure. Whether you're a Windows user or a Mac user, you're familiar with files and folders. And the typical file and folder environment is quite simply, I put all of my data or files for a particular project in this folder, and then I store that folder in another folder uh, somewhere in my, on, my, um, on my MacBook or in, in some random directory for projects that I'm working on, et cetera. But what happens when that project that you're working on is related to multiple clients or that file that you're using has been, um, maybe it's a presentation file that's been shared with multiple different clients. It belongs in different folders, right? Well, with the brain, you can simply have one individual file and any customer it's related to can be linked in the brain. And here's a great example of that. I've got my customer, Instant Dynamics. If you recall, I clicked down through clients, clients by industry, media and entertainment, and then Instant Dynamics. I could have also clicked down through communications because they're also a communications uh, corporation. So I've got it linked under both areas without doubling up the content, without making a copy of the directory and all of its data, um, or a shortcut, because with a shortcut, you can still get to where you're going, but you have no way of visualizing all the different relationships that, that in this case, a client may have. So it falls under these two categories. It also falls under gold service level clients. So I've got another category for my clients, for all of my gold, silver, or bronze customers. Now, Instant Dynamics is signed on for one year of gold service level client support. So I've got them linked here under service level gold. Now, I might need to review all of my gold service level clients or all of my silver or bronze someday. And rather than going to each client and opening up a contract to find out, gosh, did they sign on last year for silver or bronze? I don't remember, it's hard to keep track of. Here I quickly drag a, a link within the brain. So when I have a new client, I link them into their all their appropriate categories and I can easily find that information in the future regardless of how I'm thinking about that client. So let's go ahead and do that now. Before we start talking about adding files and attachments, I'm going to create a new client. So let's say, um, and actually, I've got a great category for this. If I go back up into all of my clients, I've got all of my perspective clients and light ray events. So light ray events is, uh, they're all about uh, um, communications. So I'm going to start typing in an existing thought name. And there it is, communication. So I want light ray events to be linked under communications. Also, they signed on to be a silver service level client. So I'm going to click and drag a link to create a new parent thought. And I type in the name silver, and there it is, level silver. So I double click, and that allows me to link to an existing thought. So to create new thoughts, we simply click and drag off of a gate, but we can also link to an existing thought. So let's say Light Ray Events uh, has a, a new project that I'm working on with them. It's called the Spring Spectacular. So I click and drag off the child gate to create a subcategory and type in, I'll just call it the Spring Special. And notice that no pop-up box appears here. Earlier when I was typing in a thought name, I was looking for an existing thought. Um, so all existing thoughts that match whatever I've typed in so far would show up. In this case, it's a brand new category. It's called the Spring Special for this particular customer, so it doesn't match any existing thought names. So I type in my new thought name and hit enter. It's that easy to add new content into the brain. At any time, I just click and drag off of a gate to create a uh, 
to type in a, a new thought name. Now, they are no longer a prospective client since they've signed on, and so I'm going to right-click on the link between prospective clients and uh, my client Lightray Events. So I right-click and just simply select Unlink. So it's very easy to add new links to thoughts. Now, I didn't delete that prospective clients. The prospective clients thought is still there, but Lightray Events is no longer linked to that thought. So now I've got a new client that's uh, moved from being a prospective client to now a silver service level client. They fall under communications. Um, I can always find this client by going into the different categories that I've set up for myself uh, to find this content. Now, also, I want to be able to get back to this thought very, very quickly in the future. This is a particularly large brain. I've got maybe, I don't even know, uh, one or 2,000 thoughts in, in this particular brain. So Lightray Events, it's my new client. I'm going, to be, uh, I'm going to be accessing this particular thought often in the future. So I'm going to right-click and select to create a pin for this thought. And a pin is just a really nice shortcut to a thought that you happen to frequent. Here again, I've got a fairly large brain, and this is a client that I'm going to be visiting quite often. So at any time, regardless of where I happen to be in my brain, I'm going to go all the way back to eSolutions Consulting, and I get a phone call or an email, or I have an idea about that spring special that I'm working on for my new client. I don't have to navigate down from clients to clients by industry, et cetera. I can simply click on that pin at the top. So a pin, I may have anywhere from five to maybe 10 pins, depending on what my current focus is for a particular brain that, uh, that I'm working on. And if I find that I'm no longer frequenting a thought so much, I've done my sales review for the year, I had that thought pinned earlier, I can right click and remove the pin. If that doesn't delete the thought or forget it, just removes the shortcut that I had to that particular thought. And additionally, I can, and I see a couple of questions coming in. Great, thank you so much for writing in the questions. Actually, they're coming in as I speak. I just want to make sure no one's writing in, Matt, we can't hear you, we can't see your screen, things of that nature. So uh, that's great. It looks like we're all good so far, and I'll get to those questions in just a bit. Um, but regardless, one more uh, piece of information about creating new thoughts. We also have keyboard shortcut options for creating new thoughts. I've been clicking and dragging to create new thoughts manually here. But let's say under the spring special, I want to create the sort of the project outline and my project budget and how it's going to be released, et cetera. So I've got a lot of notes and thoughts and data to create underneath this particular thought. Once again, I can click and drag off of the gate to create that new thought. I'll hit escape and show you that you can also right click on a thought to create a new child. So I'll click on create child, so that's one option. So here's my project outline. Spring special. And you may have noticed next to uh, where it said create child thought, there was a keyboard shortcut as well. And as I mentioned earlier, the brain on a Mac is designed specifically for Mac. So in the past, if you're familiar with older versions of the brain, the brain eight and prior, uh, we still had sort of some, I guess I'd call them holdouts from being a Windows designed product in that uh, there were some window friendly keyboard shortcuts. Now with the brain 10, all of our keyboard shortcuts, um, uh, the pre-existing keyboard shortcuts are specifically Mac friendly. So example being to create a new thought i'm actually going to click on option command and the down arrow so didn't touch my mouse at all i know you can't see that but i clicked on the keyboard option command and the down arrow to create a new child thought and so my new child thought will be uh budget for spring special and i can do option command left arrow to create a jump thought something we haven't talked about yet. So I'm going to link this to an existing uh, thought. I'll see there's Alex. I'll double click. And since Alex will be helping me with my spring special, I've linked him as a jump thought. So let's talk a little, uh, just a little bit about the placement of thoughts and, and relationships within the brain. Um, you notice that uh, light ray events above the current active thought, I refer to that as being a parent thought. We've got a parent thought, 
the active thought, and then down below are all of our child thoughts. Just so you can understand as you're staring at a brain, you know, the, the hierarchy of, of the structure that you're creating. So parent thoughts, the active thought, and the child thoughts are subcategories down below. Now to the left is something that we call a jump thought. And a jump thought is related to the active thought, but not necessarily fitting into any type of hierarchical structure. So uh, Alex, I can link down below Spring Special. So notice I slowly clicked and dragged below Spring Special and it relinked, the brain relinked Alex uh, Thomasberg as a child thought. Now I can also click and drag him above light ray events and you'll see that he is now a parent thought above the active thought. So spring special is a subcategory of Alex. Well, that doesn't really reflect my business profile. I like people being linked personally as a jump thought for all the projects that they're working on. And that's a personal choice, it's up to you. And as you can see, you can always go back in and modify and change um, how thoughts are related to one another. If you wanna have all of your people the projects that we're working on as child thoughts of those people, uh, that's, that's certainly your option. Now, Thomas, let's say I want linked up to Lightray. I'm gonna click and drag and just hover over Lightray events. So I've linked him as a jump thought to Lightray and I can then right click and unlink. Oops, let me get a, there we go. Right click and select unlink. Uh, from Spring Special. So I've moved Alex from being a jump thought below or connected to Spring Special, as you can see, to a jump thought of Light Ray. So I've just simply replaced where this thought is linked within the brain. And to show you a better example of that, I'm just going to go back into communications and down into uh, my Instant Dynamics Corp. And as you can see here, I've got multiple different projects under this thought. I've got multiple people working on this account. It actually falls into different, a few different categories. It's communications, it's media and entertainment, it's a service level gold. So I've got multiple parent thoughts, multiple child thoughts down below. And as you can see with the different people, I've actually defined what their relationships are. So I can see that Joe Smith is an advisor for Instant Dynamics and Fred Smith is the account lead for Instant Dynamics. And these are called link labels. And a link label, again, takes uh, the brain to another level that a file and folder system just simply can't accomplish. When you drop a document into a folder uh, or create a subfolder for a project that you're working on, phase one, phase two, phase three, is phase one completed yet? Is phase one in review, what's the status? What's the relationship between this folder and the folder that it's in? It's simply a subcategory, and there's no way to explain other than renaming the entire folder uh, or adding another document that sort of defines the layout of the land, what these relationships are. If you've got five different people uh, linked in some way into a project that you're working on, what are their roles? What are their responsibilities? And again, you need a document to define that. And here we can just click on the link between two thoughts to define its relationship. So here I've got a, a thought, um, an action item, new media blitz under instant dynamics. Um, I'm gonna double click on the link between these two thoughts. Now notice when I do that, the link is highlighted. I can leave a note on a link, so I can actually add additional context to the relationship between two thoughts. Um, or I can simply add a label. And that's a personal choice, again, how much information you wanna to add to the links. For me, typically, I add uh, some type of a brief description on the link label. So new media blitz, we're not really positive if this is gonna, uh, this is gonna go or not. So we, we need to pitch this idea a little bit more. So I'm just gonna say 50% um, uh, So we're 50% sure, we're 50-50 of, of whether this new media blitz is gonna work for it. So just a, an example of labeling a thought, if I want it to stand out, I can change the color code. So I've got a nice bright uh, red link there. And there you can see when I mouse over new media blitz, we're 50% sure we'll be doing this new media blitz for instant dynamics, but it hasn't been approved yet. My current focus, as you can see, is this all together now. And I know that the next phase that we're gonna be moving on to is 
see the world. That's my next phase. I can click on see the world and open up that project or that document, review my notes, et cetera. So once again, just that great visualization that you have of all of your data with additional context, uh, the relationship between pieces of information, notes that are associated with documents, with projects, all easily accessible from the brain. So let's go ahead now and talk about those different attachment types and the different types of, of data that can be associated with a thought. And this is a great example <clears throat> because already on this see the world, this next phase, and again, this is a sample uh, brain that I'm using. So a little bit of this information, as you can see, is outdated. Uh, the next phase happened back in October of, of 2018. But let's say that uh, we're going to re-release in 2020. So that's why it's the next phase, a re-release in 2020. Now, what I'm doing right now is typing into the notes area of the brain. Each individual thought that you create in the brain will always have a note by default, a blank note associated with it. And the notes are just a really, really great way of quickly capturing information, data, thoughts, ideas about people, projects, and, and documents that you're working with. So the notes are designed to uh, be a very simple, basic uh, format. There's some formatting, as you can see up above. I've got some drop-down menus uh, so I can add additional context and additional information. If I want to timestamp something down below, uh, notes from meeting on, I can just click that timestamp button. So June 12, 2019, and here are my notes. I've got my to-do list. And I love using checkboxes. As you can see, I used some checkboxes there in the past. And on this thought, I'm going to do it again. So what am I going to do for the re-release of 2020? Well, the first thing I'm going to do is read through all the old documents and see what we can uh, sort of bring back to life and, and revamp. So that's my first phase, review all existing data and files with Rob. Phase two is review budget, or my next item in the checklist, I should say, review budget with Shelly. So I can simply add a bunch of items in my checklist and check those off as I'm done. So I know when the next phase comes, whether or not I'll be ready to go with this See the World ad campaign. I love, love, love using those check boxes to keep track of of different projects. And from time to time, there's an additional step that I do when I'm using a checkbox. So let's say I'm about to navigate away from this particular thought, and I've got an action item that is not completed. I have not spoken with Shelly yet about whether or not uh, we've got an approved budget for this re-release of See the World uh, ad campaign for my customer Instant Dynamics. So I'm gonna add to this thought. I'm gonna click on this thought, and anytime you click on a thought, you're opening up the thought properties. So this is the, the thought properties where we can color code. We can, as you can see, I can add a little icon. It's assigned as an active project, but also I can assign tags. So let's go ahead and just take a moment to talk about tags. I love uh, tags in the brain just because you can add multiple different attributes to a thought. So uh, this particular thought, let's say it's, it's not urgent. 2020 is a, it's a little ways off. So uh, it's important that we get this done, but it's not absolutely urgent. It doesn't need to be done next week. So I'm going to tag this as urgent, but not important. And in that scenario, I'll come back to this tag list in a bit. You can see when I mouse over the thought, I'm reminded that see the world, this ad campaign for my customer is, it's not urgent, but it's important that it gets done. And from time to time, let's say I get a little bit of free time and uh, I checked off all my urgent action items in my brain that I needed to take care of. What is there to, to work on or review over the weekend or I've got a light workload next week. Let's see what I'm going to be working on. I'm going to look for anything in my brain that's, ur that's uh, not urgent, but it's still important. So I open up my tag for not urgent, but important. And I can see I've got four action items here. My uh, descent uh, client. Again, there's some notes on there that I need to review. I'm working on a desktop search document. As you can see, I've been having some meetings with Barb. 
what is it that's not urgent but it's still important well that information will be found on the notes and in this case it's typically uh items that have unfinished action uh, action items unchecked check boxes um, so that's a little uh feature that i like to use from time to time but as i mentioned you can have multiple tags per spot so i'm going to click on see the world again and actually add incomplete and this is what i use for unchecked items sometimes what's urgent uh or not urgent but still important is just you know a review of the document or make this call or whatever it's not an actual checklist but when i add a checklist and not everything is checked off i'm going to keep it as incomplete so if i go to and i can actually click on this incomplete tag to see all thoughts that are incomplete and if i go to these uh, you can see I'm going to find some checkboxes that aren't checked off yet. So that's how I identify in a very large brain all thoughts that have a checkbox that is not checked off quite yet. I assign the incomplete thought tag to those particular thoughts, and I can find all of them in a brain very, very quickly. So that's adding some notes to the thoughts. And as we can see, I'm going to come back to, let's click back really quickly to my instant dynamics corporation i'm going to start talking a little bit about adding files and documents now as well so as you can see i've got a note on this particular thought but i also have a web attachment so the great thing about uh, the brain and linking your favorite web content and web pages into the brain is that they auto load in the content window so here you can see once again this is a sample brain but it's loading up timewarner.com and I can continue on navigating through this website without ever leaving the brain application. And I can even click and browse through the website. Let's review their strategy. I can click to their strategy page, load that content up. So I'm just browsing through that web link right here in the brain's built-in browser. And I also have purchase agreements and documents on the exact same thought. So contracts, what have you, uh, multiple documents, web pages, notes, all on a single thought so i'm keeping that all together and in context so let's go ahead now and leave my business brain and i'd like to jump into my personal brain i want to share just a couple of uh of my favorite features of the brain i've already talked about checklists and it's no surprise when i open a brain um, that i've created you're always going to go to your last activated thought so the last time i had this particular brain open I was on a thought called outdoor chairs and bench. So I'm an amateur woodworker and this is uh, in my brain. I keep track of all of my woodworking projects and hobbies and notes, et cetera. And uh, my wife and I are gonna be building some outdoor patio furniture. And so there you can see, I've got a couple of just different designs of, of style. That's not my patio, but uh, other patios and other uh, very simple designs that we sort of like. And I've got myself a checklist. So anytime we talk about the project, uh, we check a few things off or, or uh, you know, I keep track of the notes of what we've determined here in my brain. And if we finalize the design, obviously I would link to that and simply check that, uh, that action item off the list. You can see in my recreational brain, I don't add the thought tag for an incomplete item just because this is, there's no pressure here. It's just a recreational brain where I keep track of my own personal uh, hobbies and, and interests. But I also like the fact that I can review all of, or keep track of, I should say, all of my favorite web pages, not only in context, but with additional information that I wouldn't be able to keep track of if I was just bookmarking or saving all of my favorite web pages uh, in my browser favorites. And as an example of that, let's see if I can jump back to, this is a thought that uh, I show from time to time. So I'm gonna click into Watercraft. So I'm in the process of uh, my kids and I building a cedar strip canoe. So I've got a lot of different notes about this. Uh, we're calling it the Laura Bloom Journey. And there you can see I've got a little checklist of our meeting notes that I do with the kids um and keep track of things that i have purchased so one of them ashes uh here's a thought called the purchase and so i've got my gmail confirmation uh, gmail is really great because each gmail you get uh, has its own unique url 
And so I purchased the plans for a cedar strip canoe. And there you can see on the right, uh, you know, when you receive an email that says, hey, save this for your records, I never print that out. I, I run a paperless office. And uh, when I get an email like that, I copy and paste that content right into a thought in the brain. And this is the perfect example. Uh, I've got the date that it was purchased. I've got my tracking number in case I need to say, hey, it never showed up or what have you. In this case, it was a digital uh, uh, digital delivery, but I've got all the information I need in conjunction with the actual file that I purchased. So here's the, the PDF that I purchased with, uh, with plans, et cetera, and a link to the website where it was actually purchased. That's actually the, just a picture showing up in the notes that I pasted in but here's the web page loading up in the uh, content window. So think about doing that without using the brain. I've got a great website that I really like. Okay, I'm gonna save that in my browser bookmarks and favorites. Oh, I'm gonna make a purchase. So I click on purchase and I get an email confirmation. Now I've got an email and a web page. And they sent me these plans. Now I've got a file, an email that, no, no the, the, the web page was a link to download <laughs> the file that I needed. So now I've got a file that I have to save somewhere with an email with important information about the date it was purchased, et cetera, and the web page where all of this came from originally. So far, we're at three different things. What about my own personal notes on where I'm going to purchase the wood and how I'm going to build the different components and purchase the epoxy and the resins, and et cetera. So as you can see, my project just starts disintegrating in the description. I've got information all over the place. And here with the brain, I've got it all in one location. Anything to do with my little canoe project that I'm building with my kids, it's all very, very easily accessible right here from one location. So I'd like to open up now a new brain and start from scratch. So notice I can click on with the brain. I'll click on the brain, file, and create brain. You can create as many different brains as you'd like, and there's no limit to the number of brain databases you create. You can merge them together, or you can copy different parts and segment those out into smaller uh, topic-specific brains. I keep a business brain separate from my personal brain, separate from uh, other brains that I use for recipes and, and things like that. So I keep them all separate because I either share them with different people uh, or I don't want to demo a brain. I've got a brain that's all about, you know, researching investments and stocks and things of that nature. I'm not going to share that brain because I've got a lot of proprietary information. So I don't demo that brain in a webinar. So personally, I like to create smaller topic-specific brains. There's no right or wrong answer. You can create one massive brain with just a branch for your personal information or a branch and another branch off that goes to your business information or finance or research, et cetera. So I'll create a new brain with my name. And this will open up a new brain and select a random wallpaper. Um, I really like using different wallpapers for different brains that I create. So I know visually just from the background uh, what, the, what that particular brain is. Um, I'm actually going to scroll up to select light blue. So this is a default easy to use on, easy to see on the webinar. And notice I can start creating new thoughts. So I'll create a new thought for personal and a new thought for business. Now I'm skipping right ahead because you saw me click and drag to create thoughts earlier. Notice now I'm using a semicolon. And a semicolon is a really, really great trick, uh, especially if you're just getting started with the brain. It's a great time saver. And that simply creates multiple individual thoughts for me at one time. Um, so if you're just getting started with the brain, always know that that semicolon can help you populate areas of your brain very quickly. And I'm going to skip ahead really quick to my business clients. And let's say I've got a client called Alpha. And I've got a lot of existing documents or new documents to create in this area of my brain. Web pages, files, and a lot of data. You've seen me do notes. So obviously over in the notes, I would have my customer contact. I use the brain as my, uh, uh, as my CRM system. It's my customer contacts, it's phone numbers, uh, as well as all my information, data receptacles, et cetera. So customer contact is Bill 
at 414-555-1234. So keep his phone number, email, Twitter feed, web page, anything that I need is going to be about Alpha, when their contract starts, expires, et cetera. So I don't have to open up the whole uh, contract, et cetera. It's going to be right there, easy to find in the notes section. And anything that's going into the notes, as well as thought names or even file attachments is all indexed and therefore searchable. So we're going to talk about search in just a minute as well. So maybe I'll search. I see that I've got a thought for Bill or an, a note for Bill. Let's say under uh, personal, I'll also create a friend named Bill. And I'll show you why I'm going to do that in just a minute. So let's go back to business and clients and alpha. And so I've got one client for alpha, one client for beta. But let's go ahead and start adding some documents. And I've got my finder open with some sample documents. And I like to share that you can simply click and drag from finder right into the brain. Now the default setting in the brain is to create a copy of that original file into your brain. So I selected a document called Project Status. So the new thought name that I created is called Project Status. And there is my Excel spreadsheet that I just drag and drop into the brain. It's a copy of the original. So that's the default setting, but you can change how you want the brain to behave. And the typical way to do that, or the, the way that I like to share first, is to actually uh, click on the brain and go into your preferences. Now, if you're on a Windows machine, you would click on options and then preferences. On Mac, you would click on the brain preferences just because, once again, most Mac applications, your preferences are always found under the, the actual product name up above. Um, so, therefore, we've got our preferences open and on the behavior tab, I can specify how I want the brain to behave for drag and drop. Do I want to copy files in? Do I want to move files in or link? And once again, there's no right or wrong. It's whatever best fits your environment. If you are uh, working on a network and you've got access to a shared drive that five, 10, 100 people have access to, and they need access to documents in that directory, maybe moving files from that directory internally into your brain database isn't the best option. So linking to the file might be best for your environment. Personally, when I'm not on a demo, I change my setting to move files. I like to move everything into my brain so there's one place to go to to find all the data that's important to me. Again, it's just a personal choice. And you can always go back and change at a later date. So this project status is an internal copy uh, but I can right click on the attachment tab and there you can see the document is previewing there in the content window. Um, and that's something that happens on a Mac that doesn't happen automatically. This is a blank document, so it's, it's previewing a blank page because it's a sample document. But on a Windows machine, there's a button to click a preview on the Mac. We were able to just auto preview documents that are being attached. So, but I, uh, what I wanted to point out is that you can also click on or right click on the uh, attachment tab and specify on an internal attachment if you want to move or copy a file out of the brain. If you link a file and there's a shortcut, a keyboard shortcut to do that. So let's grab this, uh, I'll grab materials research. So this is another Excel sheet, but that's fine. And if I click and drag into the brain, notice by default, if I just drag and drop it in, it's actually, again, going to create a, a copy However, if I click on the command key when I drop it in, it's going to move the file in. If I click on the option key, um, it's actually going to, or the control key rather, control key is going to link the file into the brain. So materials research now is linked. The original is still there. I linked this in. And there's a little black arrow icon. And if I click on the thought to look at the properties, I can see where that file actually resides rather than saying that it's an internal attachment. So those are the keystrokes, the, the control, uh, the, the option, or the command. If I wanted to move a file in, uh, let's grab this Monday text file, drag and drop, and I click on command. And I've moved that Monday text file. If I go back, you'll notice that Monday TXT file is not there. 
And the actual document is showing up over on the right. This is a little uh, just notes for myself for a project I was working on. Um, and it loads up right there in the content window. So very easy to drag and drop data into the brain. You can also create data from scratch. So let's say I've got a presentation script. And this document doesn't exist. There's nothing to drag and drop into the brain. So right from the brain, I'm going to click on the little plus tab next to notes where I can add an attachment. I can link to an existing file if it did exist, enter a URL. In this case, I'm going to select from the, the list of available templates. Now, typically on a Mac machine, you won't see a lot of templates appearing here, and you can add those manually. So if I click on this templates button, just follow these on-screen instructions. You can create a blank document of whatever you'd like, and as you can see in the instructions, drag it into a specific directory, and if I click on yes, you'll see that directory. So anything I bring into this directory, the brain will recognize as a template. And you can see I've already created a blank Excel and a blank Word document. Um, I'm fine with that. We, it's pretty self-explanatory to uh, create a new template. So I'm gonna select from my list and say, this is going to be a Word document. And so it opens up Word, and I can say, here is my presentation. Uh, let's just do a little outline. Uh, welcome, everyone. Introduce the team, Bill, Sally, and Betty. Uh, so I'll just go ahead and save that. And notice it doesn't ask me where Word, I'm using uh, Word for Mac right now, but it doesn't ask me where I want to save the file to. This file is saved internally inside my brain. So at any point I can click away and I'll come back to presentation script. There you can see it populates the little preview there behind the uh, uh, info about the file. So there's my preview that's showing up, but if I do want to actually work on the document. I can't work on the document in the preview of the brain, but I can just pop this open in its default application. The brain will never um, ask you, you know, what you want to open this file type in. It sends that question to your OS, to the, the Mac OS, your operating system. So all of my .doc files open in uh, Word for Mac. There's my document, and I can continue on editing. So very easy to create new documents from scratch in the brain. And before I go on to web content, I talked about that search capability. Now I'm gonna search for the word bill in the brain. And notice I've got three different examples. This worked out perfectly. I created a thought named bill. I added bill to a note in a thought and I added it internally to a document. Um, so there you can see the thought named bill is showing up. A, a thought named alpha that has bill on the notes and the documentation, a document named presentation script where Bill appears in the document itself. So the brain actually utilizes Spotlight to index all of your brain data. And whether it's a, a thought name, an internal attachment, even an external file attachment, um, if that directory is being indexed by Spotlight, then it's going to show up in your search results. And if you've linked to it in the brain, then it shows up in uh, in your search results as well. So let's then move on to web research. And so let's say we're, uh, actually let's redefine that new web design for this client. And here again, I'll share with you that I can very quickly just change the color coding of these properties just so that uh, sort of stands out. This is my current focus. So I'm going to select the stock icon from the brain's icon library. I'll just grab that pencil. The brain has a built-in icon library of well over 2,000 different icons. I believe it's 2,000 now, um, but a lot of different icons for you to choose from, or you can customize and find your own as well. Um, I won't get a chance to, to demo that today, but there's many options for uh, selecting an emoji. Uh, a Windows feature that doesn't exist, but I can click on select emoji. And as long as this is set up correctly, 
I can select one of the windows emojis. So let's say I just want these glasses to appear and say, okay. I could change that if I want. Uh, or I can, oops, let's click once again. Okay, thank you, emojis. You can go away now. Um, I can capture an image. So this will minimize the brain and I can drag a screenshot or drag and capture something for a screenshot for this particular thought as well. But under the new web design thought, I'm actually going to open up my web design and drag and drop some content in. So I've got some sample web pages uh, that I really like. Here's a great KLM page. Uh, it's interesting because it's a little interactive. I can click through and, and browse through different pictures and explore. And it's very subtle, easy to use. My client might like this. So I'm going to click and drag from the address bar. Now I'm in Safari. I can simply drag and drop from the address bar right into the brain to create a nice little link to that web page. It doesn't matter if you're using Safari or if you like Firefox or Chrome, you can drag and drop from the address bar right into the brain. And that's how we get that nice little link directly to uh, that website, which once again, loads up and that interactivity, you can see things are highlighting when I mouse over or I can click to, to navigate through. Very nice, friendly website. I'm actually gonna open up the thought properties and type in a description. Simple, clean, and friendly. It's also interactive. So that's what I like about the website. And the reason why I typed that information in the thought label rather than the notes is because I'm gonna have dozens of web pages linked under this. I'm looking at all different types that my client might like. And if my client tells me right away, hey, we want something that's really clean and simple, easy to use, when I mouse over, I'll get a little hint about all the different websites I've attached. And here I typed in simple, clean, and friendly. That fits the bill. So that's the thought that I'm going to, to go to to say, hey, we can create a website for you that looks like this. Um, so once again, that was simply done with a drag and drop from the browser right into the brain. Speaking of dragging and drop into the brain, let's go ahead and talk about very specific Mac-friendly applications such as email, iCal, and contacts. I've got all three ready to demo, and it's a very, very simple process. So let's go back to alpha, and let's say I'm creating an area for my contacts. And I already have my contacts. They're in my address book. So it's a two-step process to get something from your address book into the brain or from your email or from, uh, let's minimize these, uh, from iCal. And that's simply dragging and, drop onto the, dragging and dropping onto the desktop first. So I mentioned contacts. So here I've got some contacts. And Barbara Powers is a very important contact. She's the CEO maybe of, of Alpha Corporation. So I'm simply going to drag Barbara, whoops, let me go back, select Barbara, and I'm going to actually take Barbara and drag and drop right onto the desktop. So there's my uh, VCF file that it creates on the desktop. Now I can drag and drop. I'll hover over the contact thought to drop Barbara, that contact, onto that particular thought. And as you can see, it's added as a, an attachment. So an internal attachment. So it doesn't link to your contacts. You drag and drop onto the desktop and then into the Plex the brain, and it creates an internal VCF. I can actually delete this, right click, and move that to trash. Um, I can have my contacts completely closed. So I'll just X out of there. My contacts are currently closed, but I need to look up my contacts for alpha. That's Barbara, so I click to launch. And there she is, that's being indexed, so Barbara shows up in my search, and I have easy access to her contact right there. So, and the same is true once again for calendar, calendar item, here's Juneteenth the 19th, just showing up as an event, probably some type of strange holiday that's on my calendar. But once again, drag and drop to the desktop, drag and drop into the brain, and I've got that calendar item internally in my brain. And the same finally is true for email. I'll just grab an email here very quickly. And there's also another way to, uh, to do this. Let's say for email, let's say email blitz idea. 
I'm going to create the thought first. Uh, just to share with you another way to bring these types of content from your uh, address book, from your uh, iCal, or your contact into the brain, you can right-click on a thought to actually open the thought folder. And you can see there's a keystroke. You can hit the up arrow, uh, Command, and F to very quickly open the thought folder. Every thought has its own thought folder. So I can very quickly keyboard keystroke to open up a thought folder. And I've got an email I really like. I can drag and drop right there into the containing folder for that thought. So not directly into the Plex, but into the containing folder for easy access. And there's the email starting to, uh, to load up right there in the content window as well. So many different ways to get those Mac-friendly applications or, uh, or items internally attached into your brain. And then finally, I'm going to sync this brain to the cloud. I see we're coming up on the hour, and we had a lot of questions that came in. So uh, we talked about Mac and I, uh, Mac OS and uh, iPhone and, and iPad, iOS. So let's go ahead and view this same brain on my iPhone. Now, I've got a little trick I'm going to do. I could hold up my phone. Let me hold up my phone. I don't see my camera. I'm here in the background somewhere. There's me. Uh, so here's my phone and I can click to whoops, launch the brain. So I'm going to broadcast this phone onto the screen really quickly. Uh, I'm not sure about really quickly, but I'll go as fast as I can. So I will use a little app uh, that is called Reflector and I should be seeing, there it is, 5941. So I use this on my Windows machine to demo to people how you can access your phone from your iPhone. So I actually have a, uh, I have the working version on my Windows machine. Here I'm using the temporary uh, uh, trial version. But as you can see, everything that I'm clicking on here on my phone is going to show up there on the screen. Um, and I can do this from my iPad as well. And here you can see I'm launching the brain. The last time I had this brain open. I was on my ashes thought, the, the canoe website. But I'll go back to my full brain list. So here's my full brain list. And I can click on any brain. And let's browse through. And it's still loading up some thumbnails there. But let's go ahead and I've synced that brain. I'm not seeing it uh, show up quite yet. We can refresh. Or I could do a uh, search, but I tell you what, we'll just stay in lore bloom right now. And notice I can navigate through uh, my my brain right from my phone. So anything that goes into my brain, I sync it, and I can access it from my mobile device, from my iPad, um, iPad, or from my phone. And so here I'm going to actually see on build a canoe. I can go into my checklist, so I can open up uh, the notes. So you can't see where my finger is tapping, but I'll show you here with my mouse. There's the notes icon. So if it's showing up as blue, that means that this thought has a note associated with it. Paperclip means there's a file attachment. So if I want to launch the attachment, I'll go to Ashes, and here's some uh, building stations, and I can launch the PDF document or a web page or whatever the case may be. So I can launch documents from my iPhone, all of that data going into my brain, always available from my iPhone, it's always in my pocket. Absolutely amazing. So I'm never you know, stuck to the, the, my computer or someone from work calls while I'm in a taxi or on a bus. Uh, do you have that contract, to the invoice number, phone number? Yes, I do. It's in my brain, which is in my pocket. <laughs> so I can always access that information. And here you can see down below are also the links to the brain box. We haven't talked about brain box yet. Here I can force a sync with the little cloud button. And the next button over here, the little pins, is where I can get to my shortcuts. So if I want to look at my outdoor bench and furniture, which I'm currently focused on, I can get to that thought or return to my brains list or even do a search. So if I'm doing a search for uh, ashes, So ashes, boats, I can go directly back to that thought. So again, all of the data, all accessible from your iPhone, um, iPad, 
um, or any, or even just from the web, I can log in to a website. So let's stop the sharing there. Stop mirror sharing, there we go. Um, so all of that information available to me everywhere I go by syncing to the Brain Cloud. And I'll actually log in to the Brain Cloud on our website. So here's my brain, let me refresh. I'll go back to brains. I'll see my account and then back to brain so it reloads. And now, as you can see, I'll just go to the online version. This Matt Caton brain that I just created today, if I scroll down, there it is. So I can launch this Matt Caton brain and everything that I've added into this brain personal, friends, etc. it's all available um, from, a, from any machine that has the internet. So I can log into my account to access my brain from the web client as well. So thanks everyone for joining me today. It's always a pleasure to introduce people to, uh, to the brain and, uh, and share the brain with other users. We're always available and able to hear from you at support at thebrain.com if you have further questions. Enjoy the rest of your week and enjoy your brain. Thanks everyone.